JoeBardenClean.com. Ty, that was just how you drew it up, right? Yep. LeBron, four fouls in the first half. Um, you know, you're down 13 at the time. Um, can you – or wh why did you decide to leave him in there after three, and what was going through your mind when, when you had to get him at, at four and you're down 13? What you mean? You said, why, did I, why didn't I get him out? Because yeah. I didn't want to. <laughs> It'd be like we, we were down. Uh, we needed his pop and his spunk, and I didn't think he would get a fourth foul called on him. Uh, but he did, and, um, you know, he went to the bench, and then, you know, Kyrie, you know, kept us afloat. Kevin kept us afloat, and, um, you know, we got it down, I think, to eight, and then Horford banked in a three from the top of the key when we had a good run going. But, you know, I told the guys at halftime, until we get into the fight, you know, it's going to be like this all night. You know, I thought they really came out. They took it to us. They were more physical. They were more aggressive. And um, until we decided to play and get physical back and start guarding and defending, it was going to be a long night. But, you know, I was happy with, to be to be only down 10, you know, at halftime, like you said, with Bron having four fouls and um, us being down 16 at one point. So being down 10, you know, at home, our crowd was great, you know, gave us a lot of support, great momentum. And then in the third quarter, you know, we decided to come out and, and guard and be more physical and, and get into the fight. And when we play like that, then we're tough to beat. Dave McMahon on ESPN. Ty, specifically LeBron's third foul on Smart and the fourth foul, the offensive call. What did you make of those those calls? <laughs> um, I don't know. They called them, you know. So um, the one on Smart, I don't know. You know, the one, the, the fourth one, you know, he ran he ran him over. You know, I mean, it was a good play. Rozier did a good job of stepping in and, um, you know, taking the charge. So um, we had to do what we had to do. You know, Brown had to play and, you know, picked up his fourth foul. We got him out, and then Kyrie and those guys, you know, helped propel us to cut it to 10 at halftime. And after that, in the third quarter, I thought we really came out defensively and had a defensive mindset. Ty Kenny wrote a WHBC. Nine turnovers in the first half, I think. Kenny, uh, it's funny. You only show up when we lose. <laughs> you that's funny, man. You only, you only ask questions when we lose. Okay. I'm here. Good win tonight. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, Nine turnovers in the first half. You limit that in the second half. What what was the difference in valuing the basketball in the in the second half? Well, it's big for us. You know, offensively, we know we can score the basketball. But, you know, these guys, they do a great job of pressuring you. You know, Avery, um, Crowder, Smart, um, Rozier. So they do a good job of pressuring the basketball. They're a tough competitive team. So defensively, you know, they get a lot of deflections, a lot of steals. So um, I don't think a lot of – we had a couple of turnovers that were unforced, but – for the most part, I thought they forced those turnovers. But, you know, once we took care of the basketball, we got shots. Um, you know, I thought, you know, to get the game turned around. But also defensively was the reason why it turned around. LeBron and Kyrie with the points, a lot of people are going to focus on that. But Kevin with 17 rebounds tonight. Just talk about how important he is in that area. Um, he's big, you know, and I think they're doing a great job of trying to keep Tristan off the glass. So two or three guys are going to him, and now Kevin's there cleaning it up. So um, just with him rebounding the basketball, just being aggressive, you know, going in the trenches, getting defensive rebounds is big for us because when he rebounds, you know, he's, he's the best outlet guy in the league. So, you know, he can get it to Brown or get it to Kyrie, and we can push our pace. Ty Lue, PJ Ziegler, Fox 8. Uh, what changed in particular for Kyrie Irving there in the second half and then seemed like he uh, rolled his ankle or something there in, uh, late in the, in the second half, and then it seemed like he just kind of got sparked again uh, from that. What was the difference with his game tonight? Um, you know, I thought he saw, you know, Braun went out, and um, he wanted to put a team on his shoulders, on his back, and just, you know, let us ride him until LeBron got back. And um, he did that. And we put him in some good situations, to, you know, ISO, where, where he's one of the best in the league, and um, he produced for us. You know, he got to the basket. You know, we isolated him at the elbow. He got to the basket, got fouled. So um, he really stepped up and, you know, really put us on his back and carried us. And then, you know, through that second and third quarter, and then LeBron came in, you know, the last six minutes of the fourth quarter really um, kind of sealed the deal. So, um, you know, the big three tonight was phenomenal. And um, they've been playing great this series, and we just got to continue to keep doing it. Uh, Tom Withers, AP, that's just what I was going to ask you, Ty. Did your, did your heart skip a beat when, when Kai went down? And how how is the ankle? Um, he said it was fine, but um, 
yeah, you never want to see a player go down. And, um, you know, the more games you play, the more things can happen. So, you know, um, didn't, you know, didn't look good, but, you know, he said he's fine, got back up, continued to play, you know, made some big shots. So I'm glad he's fine. Jared Weiss, CLNS Media and Celtics blog. The Celtics kept switching in the fourth quarter, and LeBron was able to kind of size whoever was up against them and attack them. Did you expect them to go back into the switching late in the game and kind of give it a one-on-one -on -one look for him? I'm just happy to be here. Ty, Scott Sargent, WFNY. This is now, because game three with Kyrie's play was kind of all for not with the loss, but now it's two straight games of super efficient play after a couple – you know where things were a little wonky. Is this is this more of the Kyrie we expect to see going forward versus what we had? You know, with him being more of a facilitator and not having the shot falling the way it was. Well, I just think he's you know he's grown as a player since I've been here. You know, each year he's grown, and um, just take what the defense has given him in the playoffs. You know, Indiana played him differently, um, Toronto played him differently, and so did Boston. But you know, we knew he wouldn't shoot the ball the way he shot it. You know, the first couple of games. So. Um, Kyrie scoring the basketball is not a <laughs> not a big deal with us. You know, we know we can score the basketball. And, um, you know, you're going to have a nice night tonight and game three where he, you know, easily scored the basketball. So, um, you know, what you want me to say? <laughs> you did it. Coach Mark D'Amico, Celtics.com. You've watched all of these guys take over at times and put your team on their back. But when – and you touched on a little bit with one-on-one -on -one situations, but how – unstoppable is Kyrie when he's in that zone in one-on-one -on -one scenarios? Very unstoppable. You know, um, he's probably one of or the best one-on-one -on -one player in the league. And um, when you give him room and give him space, he can get to anywhere he wants to get on the floor. And we know that. And, you know, what I think probably the best on ball defender in the league is A.B. Bradley, you know, and to take that challenge and, you know, to score, you know, a few baskets like that, you know, against Avery just shows you how good and special Kyrie is with the basketball because, you know, not too many guys are getting around Avery. <laughs> and, you you know, we've seen that, you know, for the last four or five, six years. So um, that just shows you how special he is offensively. Ty, you guys uh, held the Celtics 42 points in the second half while you shot 71% as a team. Which is the more impressive stat for, for you guys as a group? Um, defensively. I think the way they had had their way was offensively in that first half. You know, Coach Stevens, man, I just you know he um, put them in great situations. Um, they were you know playing our defense. They got any shot they wanted. They attacked us um, offensively. They were just so fast. They were just moving so fast without the basketball and put us in some tough situations. But I mean, the players they were running, you know, what Coach Stevens had them running was just unbelievable. Uh, Ty, Ray Jasky, ESPN on 90. Second unit, uh, out of four guys, about 60 minutes, only five shots taken between all of them. Kyle, not a shot taken tonight. How much of a concern is that? Only, I think, seven points between the entire second unit. And where does Channing Frye fit in going forward, at least in this series? Um, not really a concern because, they're not, like you said, not getting a lot of attempts. But, you know, Corver does his job. You know, defensively, he's pretty he's mm -hmm. solid. And then offensively, they're not going to leave his body. So that's... That's why LeBron and Kyrie are able to get downhill and get into the paint because, you know, Marcus Smart and those guys are doing a great job of staying home on Kyle and, you know, getting over screens. So um, with that being said, you know, if they're not going to leave his body, then we should be able to get into the paint and not force as many threes as we did in game three.